So I've got to break down this um, quant qualitative goal of do you have momentum? Where is your men momentum coming from? Um, and I'm breaking it down and looking at the blog post in five different ways. And I'm giving, again, up to five points for each of these sub points on the blog. And I think this will give me, again, a, a good picture of, well, overall, it'll give me a good picture of who's able to do what and how well the students in general are doing. But it'll give students a good picture of what my expectations are as well in the blog. So here are the five. They're not, you know, <laughs> at all um, brand new. But uh, they are. First, the content. Um, is there passion in the content? Is there personal commitment? Or is it just, I don't want to do this, I'm bored, kind of thing? Did the student find things to write about and to care about in their blog? Um, is there detail? Interesting personal detail. And is there um, extended writing? Is there evidence of using a focus sentence and then starting again and pushing more into the topic? That's what I'm looking for in the content. It's really about um, uh, perseverance and, and passion in the writing. Second, I'm looking for correctness. And you know, has the student used Microsoft Word to go make it as correct as they could? Have they uh, corrected all the grammar in the spelling? And then further, have they uh, have they kind of worked on the form of it, or is it just sort of paragraphs plopped together? Um, I want to also ask if they're extending the dialogue anyway. But I don't think it's quite fair to do that um, yet. It's a valuable point of my own that I want to work on that more with students. Uh, so looking for correctness and measuring that on a, a point value of the one to five for each blog post that the students have put up. Next, image use. Is the uh, image, is there an image and is, is it appropriate? Is it a common creatives, Creative Commons um, license image? Is it cited? Is it formatted properly? Um, is it uh, yeah, proper size and all of that? So does it work with the text? Uh, so, evaluating the image use. And then, for the fourth area, we're looking for students to have recorded at least some of these. And many have actually recorded all of their posts so far. And there's no reason they couldn't have by now. These are short recordings. It's kind of funny to call them podcasts. They're more like the old web journal, if I could say that. Um, I'm excited that uh, I worked out the RSS feed problem and I'm going to be getting um, classes, RSS feeds together um, so that I can invite people to come subscribe to listen to what the students are producing as well on Youth Voices. But uh, have they put the MP3 files up properly? Have they uh, then embedded them on their blog posts? Have they made links in the descriptions from their uh, MP3s back to the blog posts? All of that, which has been laid out for them and carefully taught, uh, can be assessed, I think. We got on a scale of one to five. And finally, the fifth area that I'll be evaluating their blogs on has to do with 
um, connections is the word I've thought of. And uh, I don't think very many students are quoting from other blogs yet, but I want them to. Um, so that will go into this category. But certainly they have um, tags, so that's in this category, and some of those tags will have become links because those tags will connect to profile pages and other people's tags. And I want to see if they've made proper links to things that they've quoted as well. So, yeah, you know, it, uh, going over those five areas of content, correctness, image use, podcast, and connections helps remind me of where the students have come to and uh, what work we need to focus on as well. And so I look forward to uh, sifting through all the students' work this weekend and, uh, and doing this evaluation of both the five areas of their blogs close. Now, uh, if you do the math there quickly, uh, they can earn up to 15 point, or I'm sorry, 25 points for each blog post. Is that right? Five times five. And uh, they could have um, seven blog posts. So it's pretty easy for people to, uh, uh, you know what, that math doesn't work. Well, here's thinking on my feet. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did mean it to be 15. Let me uh, go back and say that. that I, each of those will be evaluated on a scale of 1 to 3. And then um, 315 for each blog post. Because they should have at least one each week. And many have more than one some weeks. So, um, I think yeah, 15 points for each blog post. Five blog posts will give you 75 points pretty easily get you up to the 100 because you have the 50 points in the profile. So that's what I've decided. That's how I'm going to evaluate students and keep it focused on their work and uh, be able to tell them very precisely why they're getting the grades they get. And now for that story that I promised. Uh, as I get close to the bridge again here and uh, need to wrap up. Um, it's been a funny week. We, uh, yeah, every week is funny. There hasn't been a normal five-day week, I don't think, in the whole semester. With Mondays off, and uh, this was going to be the first week, I think, of the whole semester where we had students for all five days. Yet it was planned to uh, have college trips on this week. So, Many of the classes didn't meet one day, and then I was out on a college trip on Thursday. Now, I'm not complaining. The trips were great. You know, that all 500 students in our school, 6th through 12th grades, visited colleges with their teachers and talked about why they'd want to go to college and which colleges they might want to attend. And it was just a great time. I, I hope that some of the visits were half as good as the one that I did to John Jay, um, where we met with three alum, alumni from our school who are now attending John Jay, and uh, yeah, we met with the basketball coach and just toured the campus, kind of self-sponsored tour, but it was really quite wonderful, and the kids went to classes for half an hour in the afternoon, and they just seemed to have a great time. Um, I did a uh, sound scene kind of podcast that I'm putting together um, based on our tour. And uh, I'll have that up on this RSS where this uh, video is going as well. It'll come up soon. Um, i got to get my grades done. Uh, but turning to my story, you know, Friday, the middle school was was on their trip, their college trip, so I didn't have my middle school students. So I took a break at one point, 
I went down and found some 11th graders in the cafeteria sitting around the table talking with each other. Uh, it was uh, Nicole, Miguel, and Angel. And they were talking about, oh, just whatever was on their minds. And they had a nice conversation going themselves. They added my conversation, my questions, my thoughts to what they were saying in a very polite, nice way. And, um, and then I noticed that Nicole was also thumbing through a uh, notebook that she has of poetry. She's a prolific poetry writer and she collects images for each of the poems as well. Um, she's a great blogger too. Um, the poetry book in a sense is acts like a blog for her. Well, it's a journal. Eh? And then she does post some of those poems on her blog. Um, so it just struck me how many discourses were going on at that table and that they were how thoughtful they were being just in their conversation with each other and then I looked down and noticed that they were passing a piece of paper and the first thing I saw was lol then I saw other chat language on that piece of paper I noticed that it had different handwriting on it and they had been passing it in a circle around um, to each other and I said what is that they said, oh, this is chatting, but it's without computers. <laughs> they were passing notes. But it was different than the other conversation they were having. It was different than the conversation they were having with me. And it was related, perhaps, but not directly to the book of poems that Nicole was thumbing through uh, and adding to every once in a while. But it was another conversation, another level of literacy happening right at that moment. So it just was interesting to me to see how even when they're not in front of a computer, these literacies, these ways of using language are deep in, uh, in how kids uh, communicate with each other in the world. I, uh, I thought back to uh, a question that came up. Uh, when you don't have computers, what do you do when you have a blogging project? And one of the answers that uh, Madeline Brownstone came up with was to, you know what? Get some paper and pretend it's a blog. So, you know, just like those kids were using um, paper to to chat, you know, they were using chat language on there, and they were uh, the topics. I'm guessing are similar to what they would use if they were actually IMing each other. So I leave you with that story, and uh, a sense of how I am here toward the end of October, getting uh, in the middle of the semester of blogging in the uh, autumn of 2006. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Please check out our uh, live webcast at uh, edtechtalk.com on Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, my email is allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-P-R at gmail.com and uh, you can find a lot of our thinking up there in Teachers Teaching Teachers org where you can subscribe to the podcast from that live webcast and on there you can uh, find a subscription to this podcast as well that includes this video um, so teachers teaching teachers org is where to find it all talk to you all again soon uh, have a good evening